Hey, this is Henry Evans, author of The Hour Day Entrepreneur. Thanks for joining me. I wanted to do a quick interview with one of our members because he's got a, just a tremendous story. He works full time, keeping us all safe, protecting our country, but also has been able to become an entrepreneur as well on the side. And what he's been able to do has just been incredible. And I thought it'd be fun to share with you because he's got some really great words of wisdom for somebody who's out there as either an existing entrepreneur or you're thinking about being an entrepreneur. So, Omari, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Henry. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited today. Great, Some man. Stuff here. Well, yeah, you know what's really neat is, you know, so many people come to the meetings mm -hmm. and so many people take action, but you kind of stand above and beyond on a different level. So, a lot of people who tell me who either come to the meetings or who are members online only mm -hmm. say, you know what, I just don't have time to listen to that. I don't have time to implement a marketing strategy. I don't have mm -hmm. time to, to take action on what they know they need to do. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit, what's your average day look like right now? Uh, my average day looks, oh man, wow. <laughs> it's overwhelming just thinking about it. So of course I work full time uh, as an armed professional. Uh, I also have going to school full time. Uh, I made a promise to my daughter that I would finish my college degree and uh, she's, uh, I got six kids actually. So four daughters and I promised them all I would finish school and if I could do it, they could do it. So I got to finish Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Um, got newborn twins. Uh, they just turned one last year. Of course, the wife uh, running three companies now. Uh, four, well, three and one third because I'm one third <laughs> owner in the other company. Uh, not to mention consulting, uh, helping out other entrepreneurs, other uh, guys in my niche, my industry. So it's it's pretty busy. Uh, and night ends around anywhere from you know midnight to one, depending on the day. So. Wow. Work. So people that are out there that maybe they have a job and are looking to start something up on the side, mm -hmm. not only do you have a full-time job in the armed services, you also have six kids, mm -hmm. two of them being twins mm -hmm. who are basically newborns, basically. I mean, you know, one year old, and then you have multiple businesses that you're running also. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about, and, and you're going to school, I almost yeah, forgot. I'm school. Huh? So, so talk a little bit about how do you currently manage your time and where do you choose to spend your time day in and day out? Okay, well, uh, first of all, when it comes to managing your time, I think you gotta prioritize. And I learned that from you, Henry. Uh, your book, The Hour a Day Entrepreneur, revolutionized my entire mindset on getting things done and taking advantage of time. So when I look at time, and I look at it now as how much is my time worth, right? right? So I try to prioritize and spend the time on the most profitable items. Um, if you look at, and, and actually quantify, I think in our last meeting, we talked about quantifying a time. So, you know, just for example, if my time is worth an hour, $200 an hour, then I can't spend time doing anything less. You know, I can't spend time doing a $10 an hour job or something right. I hired to do. Um, so prioritizing, um, really dialing in and quantifying what your hours are worth and working on the big things first. That's fantastic. So. If you think back to when you first decided to be an entrepreneur, because obviously we're working mm -hmm. and working full time mm -hmm. and doing the school thing, I assume, at the same time. So talk about what process you went through when you were thinking about, hey, you know, I'm kind of thinking I might want to start up my own thing here. Right. Well, I actually wanted to start my own business when I was a kid. Um, I was probably in my teens, uh, early teens, and I decided, you know, you see the big cars and you see the nice houses and you see the freedom that an entrepreneur has. Right. And I always wanted it. Um, it wasn't until last year uh, I had went to an event uh, in November uh, by held by Lloyd Irvin up in LA. Yep. You know Lloyd, absolutely. And which that's how I what led me to here eventually. Um, I decided that I had given my time, served my country for over 19 years now, and when I got out, I wanted to give back to my family and kind of get some of that time back and do what I want when I want with who I want. Right. Um, so then I made the decision. So I made that decision first to be an entrepreneur. Um, and then as far as getting the business started, I got a mentor and started listening, whether it's a virtual mentor or whether it's an actual mentor. And I started listening and reading, um, doing a lot of online research, uh, the information's out there. And then kind of toyed around with it, you know. In the beginning, I figured that my thought process was still based on a job. Right, so I wasn't thinking like a business owner in the beginning, but once I started coming to meetings, you know, coming to Hour Day Entrepreneur, listening to you, getting you on on my team as a mentor, um, then you know, you really showed me what it meant to be an entrepreneur. So the switch was pretty easy. That's great. That's great. Now you know a lot of people. So when I think about 
the reasons people sometimes come to a few meetings, mm -hmm. learn some things, and then leave and then end up stagnating and kind of staying right. where they were. You obviously have got a different philosophy, which is, you know, you're not afraid to invest your time, your money, your energy into mm -hmm. things that you know are going to make a big difference. So what would you say to somebody that's saying, you know what, I just don't know if I want to spend, you know, a hundred bucks a month mm -hmm. on, you know, learning marketing stuff. Right. You know, you know, what would you say to somebody who says that to you? Um, I'm pretty blunt with people, you know. Um, I tell them don't get into business. If you're not willing to invest time, money, and energy, then s get a job, get told what to do, and, and carry on. Here's the deal. When I started school, um, if you look at how much it costs to get a degree, and I've had some close family members spend tens of thousand dollars for a degree, and I'm not bashing that. It's a, you know, it's a good thing. I'm doing it, so I think I can say it. Let's say you spend fifty thousand dollars for your degree. Most people that spend that money are getting it on a loan. So when you get out of school, you're starting in the negative. Then you spend the next 10, 20 years trying to pay that off. Right. And you're only making, you know, 10, 20 years, you may get to 60, 70. I mean, that median income in America is what, 40 to 50? All right, cool. Now, in a business sense, every dollar, um, and I got this from Zach Evanish um, in New Jersey. And what he said was, anytime I invest $1, in my business, I want $10 back. Right. And I can tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that $100 a month, I've made 10 times that back. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So when you look at it as an investment, where are you gonna get a 10 times return, even in the stock market? You know, so investing in your education on information that you can implement and take action on immediately and see the results pretty quickly, that's right. an investment. You can't beat it. So. Um, Odd. If you're not willing to invest, then business may not be for you. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's and and, and that's, that, that really mirrors exactly what I tell people, which is a lot of being an entrepreneur is all about, are you willing to do what it takes? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that means you have to do the things that maybe aren't that much fun oh, yeah. or that you don't really want to do, <laughs> like staying up to one in the morning absolutely. working. And, but at the end of the day, you know, you're able to find that this is the way to freedom. Yes. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it truly is. So, absolutely. You just used the, uh, one of my favorite A words, which is taking action. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that I do every month when we teach these marketing strategies is I say, look, you're going to get overwhelmed with a lot of ideas. Write down all your notes and then mm -hmm. just pick one thing to actually take action on. So how mm -hmm. do you, this will be good for people that are thinking about either oh, going yeah. into business or who already are, how do you choose, look, I got 30 ideas. What do I take action on today? And, and, and how do you motivate yourself? You're, you're a pretty motivated guy. <laughs> um, well, how do I choose? Like every meeting, I can tell you every meeting that I go to with Henry, I come home with four to five pages of ideas or things that I should implement. And I look at what's going to make me the most amount of money fast. Right. Right. And right. I take that idea and then I see, okay, then I say, okay, well, do I have to do it? Can I delegate it? Or is it just too much right now and then move on to the next idea? So that's kind of my problem. I learned that from you. Do delegate or defer, right. right? So when I look at taking action, I look at dollar signs. You know, I qualify everything. Dan Kennedy says, when you think about business, you got to think about money, right. period. You know, so that's how I do my ideas. Now, as far as uh, the second question being, what idea do I choose and then how do I take the action? You just got to do it. How do I motivate myself to take action? Uh, a lot of reading, and I look at the certainty aspect. So I was watching a video by Tony Robbins, and he talked about um, uh, Frank Kern. It was a Frank Kern video with Tony Robbins. If you haven't heard Frank Kern, Tony Robbins, look him up. Frank Kern was asking Tony Robbins, why is it that 76% of the people don't take action? I guess there's a statistic out there that 76% of people that get ideas don't implement. Right. That spend yep. the money. They don't take action. And one thing that stuck out to me, what Tony said was certainty. If you were certain, like Henry, if I said, do these five things, and at the end, whether you fail or whether you succeed, you have to do these five things the way they need to be done. At the end of your five things, I'm not going to evaluate it. I'm just going to hand you a check for a million dollars. You would do it. Right. But... If you take the majority of people, some won't believe it, some will fight it, some will look at the five things and go, I think I can do it better. 
But at the end of the day, most people won't do what it takes. Right. So I, the way I motivate myself is I have a level of certainty. I know that through modeling, if I do, you know, right now, and I tell the world right now, Henry's at the top of my list as far as people that I model. If I want what he has, or I want what successful people has, I have to do the things that successful people do. Right. Period. And if you're not willing to do it, then you pretty much made up the decision. The motivation comes at how bad do you want it? You know, like for me, I get out of my full-time job December, and this is good because I actually get to announce it, so it keeps <laughs> me honest. December 2014, I retire from my profession, and I'm going to be an entrepreneur full-time. Right. Two years is not a long time. I don't have time to get distracted. I don't have time to make excuses. I have to stay motivated because that, that time frame is in my head, and it's right. in front of me all the time. So I hope that wasn't too long. But that's, oh, that was, that was great. That's, that I was great. That you know what's, uh, what's, what's just neat, too, when you talk to somebody that is, is successful and on the road to being even more successful, which mm -hmm. you really are, you find out that they just have this thirst for knowledge. Oh, yeah. And, and really, if you look back and if you read the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which mm -hmm. if you haven't read it, it's a must read. It's just Absolutely. a must read. And you, know, you just mentioned one of the top, you know, really things that he teaches, which mm -hmm. is you have to have a burning desire for success. Mm hmm and it can't be, yeah, I'd really like to have success, or success would be cool, that'd be fun, I hope that happens. Mm -hmm. It has to be, I will do whatever it takes to make this happen for me. Mm -hmm. And that level of certainty, that level of that burning desire, really is the fundamental piece of what Absolutely. makes people successful. I yes. mean, I, mean, and I, I see that in you, and that's why I wanted to bring you in here, because <laughs> I know you've, that you've done a great job with that. So, um, we talked a little bit beforehand. I mean, it, it, was, it was actually because I actually have a pretty big library here, and you're like, hey, can mm -hmm. I take a picture of your no, success absolutely. library? Because you've got a lot of the same books, too. <laughs> Um, you know, but I've, I've, I've invested, uh, you know, six figures in my own education. Mm -hmm. This is not including college, mm -hmm. uh, which I also spent a lot of money on, <laughs> but it's like, this is like the important marketing things. Right. And it's, it's been the best investment because I've made back, you know, just like you, yeah. tenfold and more so. So talk, a, you know, a little bit about, um, you know, we were speaking about the big rocks right. and how you put the big rocks in first, because I think that analogy might be good for people to hear from you. Right. So the big rock principle, um, you take the big rocks, and if you want to fill up a jar with rocks, you put the big rocks in first and put the little rocks around it. The analogy goes to prioritizing the most important thing. So I think we, when we covered it and making our goals for 2014, you want to focus on the important but not urgent things. Right. Right. And everything else is the little rocks. Um, but that's based off of your, your goals. You know, if you take your dream, I always tell people, actually, I did a consultation uh, not too long ago, just on basic, you know, just like we did, setting, setting up your path. So if you take your dream, your dream day, your dream lifestyle, and then you break that into all the things you want to do in life, your goals, and then you start attaching, prioritizing out of all the things you want to do in 2013, what, what are the priorities? You know, one, two, and three, and then categorize it from there. And then go, okay, now I'm gonna attach deadlines to it. Okay, from there, now you can start putting together concrete action items so you can break down those big goals into little ones. Right. Right? So putting in the big rocks is figuring out where do you wanna go. That's a big rock for me. And if, as through the day, through the week, I'm looking at what actions are gonna get me closer to my goal. To me, those are the big rocks. Right. Everything else, like checking email, answering the phone, those are little things, right? So I either get rid of those things, which I'm in the process of doing. Thank you, Henry. Um, <laughs> I'm in the process of doing now, and I can see already the amount of time I'm going to gain back, the amount of the, the decrease in energy is going to take me to get things done, right. um, and actually the return on investment as far as the money right. because... I'm able to structure my life that way. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I'll yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I, that I go through in the Hour Day Entrepreneur Academy, which is how do you hire the perfect assistant, which oh. is something that we were talking about and something that I know that you're going through that and, <laughs> and getting that system put into place. But, you know, I, I like to use the example, Richard Branson is not out there at Virgin Atlantic Airlines cleaning the plane. Mm -hmm. And he has people to do that, and he's got a team of people. And so you can't reach, you can reach some degree of success definitely making six figures mm -hmm. if you work by yourself. But really to get to the next level, you have to get help. You have to have mm -hmm. expertise from other people outside. Right. And so getting an assistant is really a big one. So um, talk a little bit about, 
you know, obviously you start priming the pump, you start learning, you start investing. Yep. You know, how long does it take? Because a lot of times people come to the meeting right. or come to the website and say, yeah, I'm ready to get going. I run a startup a business tomorrow and start, mm -hmm. you know, I want to make 10000 a month and expect mm -hmm. that to happen, you know, on week two. Mm -hmm. um, how much time have you spent investing before you start to realize some of the ROI here? Um, when I started, let's say my first meeting was February of 2012. Um, I can almost remember exactly what I was wearing and what was happening. It was, it was revolutionary for me because I really learned what an entrepreneur is supposed to be about. So when I look at the time frame, and I just read this, I forgot where I read it, but I stopped looking at the time frame it took to get my return on investment because I knew I was going to get a return on investment. So let's say I implement now, if we go to the tactical side, right, just quick things that you can do. Right. I've implemented things and saw a return immediately on some things. You know, I, uh, what was it? We were talking about opt-in boxes, right? right? And so at the meeting, we talked about the importance of opt-in boxes and where they go. So the return on investment was that was I wanted to get more leads. I'll tell you, as soon as I put an opt-in box on there, I did the copy for it, I started promoting it, I got leads immediately. Got more leads, right. And that helped the funnel, right? So now, but there's a, I think the other side is a learning curve, right? So some of the ideas that I get, I get them, I go good is good enough, I put it in there, but there's a learning curve as far as tweaking it and learning how to track it right. and getting it going. So that may take a couple months. But, I mean, on, on, the, uh, on the big scale, I think that by coming to the meetings, by reading what you recommend, um, there's three principles in Three Can Grow Rich that I really harp on daily. It's getting specialized knowledge, right. having a mentor, and the mastermind principle. Yes. Those three principles will will catapult you from wherever you're at today to where you want to be. Those three right there. I mean, all 13 are important, but those three, specialized knowledge, or specialized knowledge coming to the meetings, getting information, having a mentor that can coach you, like I have Henry, and joining a mastermind, or being in an environment, a mastermind environment. Um, where the rubber meets the road, though, is taking action. Right. Right? If you take action, you'll get the result. But if you don't take the action, you can't take half the action. Right? So a lot of people, you know, you, they'll get the recipe for the cake, and they say, no, nah, I don't need no eggs, and then wonder why the cake doesn't come out. Right. Right. So if you're going right. to take action, do the steps, and then you'll see a return, and that return may be gradual. You know, you may implement something and see, okay, well, on this, I implemented this new uh, sales letter. Okay, I got a little bit of response, but it's not the response I want. Okay, so I tweak it a little bit. Okay, now it's getting a little bit better. All right, tweak a little bit. Now, and then boom, the floodgates open. Yeah. So, you know, that return on investment thing, I believe, if you're getting specialized knowledge, have a mentor in a mastermind environment, you will gain return on investment immediately, even if it's that uh, virtual return on investment. And then if you keep at it, then you will see an actual hard, concrete return on investment. Right. Does that Absolutely. Make sense? That makes complete sense. Okay. And, you know, you talk about, you know, several principles from Think and Grow Rich, mm -hmm. and those are three of my favorites, too. And then I really put that burning desire is kind of the fuel behind all Absolutely. of them, which you already had that. And so, I mean, I would have picked the same exact three for you as well. But that burning desire, and if you don't have that right now, one of the ways to get to that, and I've coached a lot of people on this, is don't be thinking just about yourself on, I really want this for my family. I want to take this trip. I want to buy this car, do this for myself. If you focus on what you can actually help other people with, oh, yes. and having your gift influence oh, and help yeah. other people, and that's going to give you a bigger why than just, hey, I get something for myself. Mm -hmm. When I made my mission not about, hey, Henry gets to take a cool trip or buy a new car, that's all fun, but hey, I'm genuinely helping a million right. entrepreneurs and future entrepreneurs find financial and time freedom. That to me was the big, you oh, know, just absolutely. the big leverage point because now I'm focused on something else. Yeah, I had that, um, actually, it was in one of the meetings where you spoke about that. And when I started, you know, getting some traction. So now I have a couple guys that teach for me. Now I have, you know, I'm about to add a staff member. Now I'm starting to consult clients and starting to help other people, other uh, business owners in my industry, you know, just off things that I learned from you. When I started focusing on them, then me motivating me didn't become an issue. It's not an issue. <laughs> exactly. Motivation now becomes a mute point because you have something to give and people rely on you and they enjoy, they value what you do. So that kind of keeps you going like, what is the next biggest thing that I can give them to catapult them to help them progress in their life? Because if you're, um, who was it, uh, Frank uh, Tarkinen, 
Mm -hmm. Frank talking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was listening to an audio with him and Jay Abraham, and Frank was saying, don't get obsessed with the money or the stuff. Be obsessed with creating value for others. Be obsessed with creating values for others, and you will be unstoppable. You'll be unstoppable, yeah. And, so. and just another way to put that, uh, the late now Zig Ziglar would put it this way. He said, if you want to become a millionaire, help enough other people become millionaires, Absolutely. and you'll become one yourself. And really, that's, that's the gist of that is just giving back, helping other people. So as we kind of wrap up here, um, if somebody's thinking about either signing up online, right. joining the Hour of the Entrepreneur Academy, uh, coming to one of the live meetings that mm -hmm. we hold, or just signing up and being an online member, what would you say to them? So really put yourself back if, you know, just a couple years now. What would you say to you know, Omari from two years ago who's kind of thinking, yeah, I don't know, maybe I want to do that, maybe I don't. What would you, what would you say? Uh, what are you waiting for? <laughs> like, it, it comes down to this. That specialized knowledge thing is key. And when you're an entrepreneur, especially, and a lot of people, I've had this. When I first started my business, of course, everybody wanted to give me advice. They're like, oh, you need to do brand awareness and get your brand out there. Well, that works great if you're Apple. That works great if you're Coca-Cola. Right. That doesn't work for small business owners that are running companies out of their homes, right? Marketing is key. Well, you got to get specialized knowledge in marketing. Marketing in itself is like, a, I mean, like direct response marketing, that's like getting a degree. <laughs> it is. You, it there's is. a learning curve and exactly. there's so many things to it. So it's, what are you waiting for? And not to mention, it's not like you're signing a contract. If you do it, you try it, and it's not for you, you can quit. Right. You know, I would caution you against that, but <laughs> you could. Right. You know, um, and also looking at what is the, the, the rate of return. It takes one idea to transform your business. One idea. You know, I was listening to Gary, uh, Gary Halbert. He was yep. saying, you know, they, they, everybody quotes him, said the difference between you and ultimate success is one sales letter. Right. <laughs> you know, one, one marketing idea can change your business. And it has for me, you know, really. And if people understood what I did and look at the correlation between what I do and the marketing that I do, most people say, wow, that's, that's how you market. I'm like, yeah. But it gives me, it puts equity in my business that's going to last you know, I should be gone by now. You know, most people that, that do what I do make it to this point, they're like not around, right? But because of the knowledge that I gain, the specialized knowledge through our day entrepreneur, through the online, I'm, I'm really enjoying the online portion because now I can reread stuff and I can look at Henry's videos, so I'm ecstatic about it. Um, stop playing, get serious about being a business owner and invest. Um, and I think one of your best investments is investing in our day entrepreneur. It changed my business. Um, it's it's helped me help others change theirs. Uh, cross say so, Henry. You've actually influenced people outside of me. So don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is make a decision. You know, you got to take fast action. You got to be decisive. You know, you can't. You can only sit there and go. Well, at the end of the day, at least test it. You know, test see what it. Happens. See how it works. I guarantee you, you're going to see a change. A an increase in either leads an increase in profit an increase in knowledge to help you with whatever you know i guarantee that so um that's my thoughts on that love it well you know again this is this is just fantastic i'm glad we're able to chat a little bit about this and bring you into the studio and talk and so if you're an entrepreneur a future entrepreneur thinking about mm -hmm. hey what are you going to do next where do you want to go with your life where do you yeah. want to take it um, you know, learning these marketing strategies, learning these business growth strategies, oh, yes. reading books like Napoleon Hill's oh, They yeah. Can Grow Rich, which is, is an amazing book that everybody should read multiple times. I actually read it every year. Yeah, um, and then actually take action, yeah. you know, like you said. And so, and if you have any issues with procrastination or not taking action, one of the biggest things you can do is find a bigger reason why yeah. than just yourself. So like Omari did, he's helping all these other people grow their own businesses now. He's helping his family. And it's just really exciting. I want to thank you for coming in because oh, it's going to be it's going to be great it's to see honor. what you do moving forward, buddy. Thanks, Henry. Appreciate so keep it, it up. And right. uh, thanks for joining us. This is the Hour of the Entrepreneur TV, and we'll see you next time. All right.